so how do we serve students? Um, pretty much all of the core technologies on campus are supplied by our division. Um, that would be labs, classrooms, um, active learning spaces, full gamut. Um, Blackboard, the learning management system, all the tributary services related to that, whether it's workshops or um, training, as well as help desk services. In terms of the residential halls, there's wireless um, and a number of other technologies that are, are run through different fund. Um, we've got a, an equipment checkout um, environment that TechFee uh, supports. And then um, the Student Technology Services Group, which is about 60 or so students that we employ um, specifically to give them IT experience. So we've continued to grow. Um, kind of what's, this is a sense of, of how the, the division is, is going. Um, we're meeting the needs today with less staff. Um, we're seeing costs shift from the university system to NDSU. For example, this next year, we'll see another $45,000 um, be required of us for some software that they had been paid for in the, in the past. Um, and then functional consolidation. Has anybody heard that term? Um, it was a, uh, a law that was passed a couple years ago, which essentially said that all systems, all technology systems should be managed centrally through the university system. Um, and that's quite an endeavor. The first element that we're going to experience is Blackboard in one instance, all 11 institutions in, in one instance. Future impact on students. So technology continues to grow, more and more streaming, so more and more demand on the network. Um, we're continuing to see more training requests, uh, workshop requests for faculty. Um, the, the breadth of technology that we have in the classrooms continues to grow. Um, and the integration between what's happening in the classroom and assignments outside the classroom and group work, that type of thing, continues to grow as well. So currently, um, we get $8.44 per credit. Um, and you can see the breakdown there. The, um, the estimate collections we get is just under 2.6 million. Um, and we're about 16% of the tech fee today. If you look at how it's broken up in IT, um, a large portion of it is in salaries. There's uh, specifically areas designated for um, infrastructure like wireless. You've got um, equipment, most of that is classroom equipment. Um, same with software. So we have 172 classrooms with technology in it. Tech fee is paying for 155 of them. Uh, 26 of the computer labs are general purpose and they're also um, supported by the tech fee. We've got um, a little over 1,100 computers that tech fee supports and over 60 printers with the uh, print stations around campus. So the, the first proposal that we have is a 91 cent <coughs> increase uh, per credit. Um, this is one that we had asked for last year as well. That is to provide a refresh cycle for the A Glen Hill Center, the STEM building, and then student salary increases. Um, the TFAC decided not to um, try to fund the 30 additional classrooms which were installed in 2013, their refresh, um, feeling that it might impact the, um, the overall um, SFAB process too much. 
here's how it's it's broken down if you look at it 844 with um, an additional 91 cents brings us to 935 per credit and that's how it breaks uh, per semester and then per year so we go from about 2.6 million just under 2.6 million to approximately 2.2 .2 million um, if we get this increase uh, it's about 11 percent increase from where we are today and overall it stays around 16 percent and that that figures a little bit funny because who knows what each person is actually going to what group will get um, so the first item that we're requesting um, for the increase is the STEM construction project didn't include any refresh funds, which is standard. Um, so we have a high-tech building with no means of refreshing the technology. And you can see that the scope of it, um, out of the 155 classrooms, 30 of them are in the STEM building. Uh, and that includes a lot of um, unique spaces like the scale up rooms, which have a lot of technology and are very expensive. This, this is kind of a difficult graph to read. Um, if you look at the large blue area, those are the classrooms that were um, had technology before 2013. That's roughly 60%. Um, in 2013, there was a big push for technology, another 19%, um, which is 30 classrooms. And then, um, with STEM, we had another 30 classrooms, another, another 19%. The second part of our request is a salary increase for our student workers. Um, we can't do IT at MDSU without our student workers. They are absolutely essential. Um, and what we've been finding is that as companies like Walmart have moved there, um, salary to ten dollars or more an hour um, we're just not able to compete for the types of students that we need to, to service properly the other thing that's happened is um, we used to have an advantage given our our flexibility and schedule but a lot of folks off campus are now offering a lot more flexibility for students and funding just hasn't kept up in general so if you were to look at um, our current spending, it's over 50% more than the tech fee for tech fee related items. And the reason we can do that is that there's a reserve in the tech fee um, that came about from the Central University infusing a couple of years of operating costs that will allow us to run until 2019. At that point, um, we've got some issues. We don't, uh, we don't fund it. We're seeing maintenance costs continue to rise. Um, a lot of times they're 5% five per, five or more per year. Um, and a few years back, we had a number of service agreements with the university system, um, such as the help desk services for all of the, the system and those have steadily diminished um, and those were that was like over two million dollars worth of revenue that, that we had had at one point so this is graphically kind of what I've I've talked about um, you could take this line and draw it up in terms of revenue and that was from the Central University once you hit this point and further on that's where we get into a little bit of trouble so the external factors um, we've got an amazing stem facility that's premised on technology um, and it's it's a, a point of pride for the university we've got the realities of the market um, when it comes to student workers we've got university system shifting costs back to the university 
the functional consolidation, which is intended to save money, a lot of times actually costs money, and that that comes about in more training costs and actually developing workarounds for things that can't happen uh, centrally, and then of course the maintenance fees. So. Um, the impact, about 40% of the budget that we can spend on technology comes from tech fee. So there's a number of revenue streams in IT. Um, one of them is our cost centers. So if someone prints something, we can't use that money to uh, replenish classrooms. We have to, to maintain the print facilities. Um, telecommunications is another one where it's all chargebacks, essentially. Um, all of our student workers are funded through tech fee. Um, and what we've been able to do with some technologies like wireless is expand them much quicker because of, of the tech fee. I talked about the different um, revenue streams. And then we do have um, a couple of end US service agreements in effect, but those may run dry at 1.2, so. So to give you a little bit of, of context, um, so 2013 was when we went to $8.44 per credit. That was up <coughs> uh, just a little bit from the year before. Last year we asked for a $9.61 uh, cent increase, and then this year uh, it's the 9.35. Um, the current performance and student <coughs> response, we continue to adjust to the changing budget situation, but we've also uh, increased our wireless coverage and system dramatically. Um, and now classroom, the standard classroom uh, configuration for technology is very, very high across the board. Um, and part of that is that every, like every three years we refresh computers, every six years a lot of the AV equipment. So all of the equipment is, is state of the art. This gives you a sense of our, our tech fee compared to others in North Dakota. We tried to get 2016 numbers, but at the time they were um, publishing, all of them were published in the university system. So the biggest question is UND, $72 versus uh, 101. The difference there is um, UND is much more decentralized. so. I think if you were to look at the fees that students are paying through their colleges as well as the, um, the big picture, that they're not really $72, they may be even higher than, than we are. But you can see in terms of, of our sister institutions, um, we're, we're pretty good at the 101. So contingency plan. Um, everything I've talked about has been based on the first uh, proposal. The second proposal does away with the student salary increase. Um, if there are no additional funds, we'll continue <coughs> to try to find additional sources. Um, we'll prioritize refreshes, so we will continue to try to be re, um, proactive. At some point, we become reactive. We're only able to um, deal with break, fix situations after something already has happened. Um, and then possibly lowering the standard of the equipment that we have in the classrooms. So instead of a, a touch panel, maybe there's just an LCD and that becomes kind of the standard. Ways that we're uh, trying to improve. So um, we've lost 
a number of staff to the Voluntary Separation Incentive Program, which was a, uh, a way that the university was um, able to contain costs. So um, we have three assistant vice presidents in IT. One of them has taken that program. Um, I have four direct reports. One of them has, has taken those, that program. And more than likely, we're not going to see those positions come back. And so we're looking for ways of being much more efficient with the staff we have. We're looking a lot more at service in terms of um, as, a, as a value. Um, and so a lot of thinking is going into that. For example, we'll be revamping the web page so you wouldn't have to know if something's in the IT services area or the enterprise computing and infrastructure area, it'll all be based on, on service. We've got a new account management system that'll be coming out very soon. We're piloting um, application virtualization with MATLAB, and that has implications um, of providing applications outside of the classroom. Um, and then we're looking at emerging technologies, and most of that comes from grants, like for uh, virtual reality and those kind of things. So, tons of slides. What questions can I answer for you? To get more funds, but do you mind emphasizing more like what exactly you're doing recently as compared to prior? Yeah, so some of it is grants, um, but as we've diminished staff, like we've, we lost our HR person, we probably won't have that person replaced, um, or in our software um, licensing person. So those avenues like grants become more difficult without having those. And then within the um, university, we've worked with the administration, and that's what's brought some of the additional funding that's carried us thus far. Um, we do have service agreements with departments throughout the campus, but in essence, when you charge one, it's really not helping the campus as a whole. It's just shifting the funds from one place to another. So. That's kind of what we've been doing um, in terms of it. Um, my second question goes with the MATLAB that you um, suggested. I know that a lot of my professors are no longer using that, so do you know how many professors are actually still implementing it or what the percentage is? You know, I think that there have been two last semester, and it may be only one this semester, and uh, the grad school using it. Okay, so if most of the professors, are you saying most of them are not using them anymore? So what's the purpose of the new MATLAB system? It's an excellent question. MATLAB is a pilot environment, and what it allowed us to do, it's one of the, the more um, advanced applications that we have. There's SAS, SPSS, AutoCAD, um, MATLAB, they're kind of that genre of, of applications. So what it allowed us to do was to virtualize a very large application. And because only two faculty were teaching, we could limit the pilot to a single room and a, a, a very narrow cohort of students to, to begin to get feedback. We were talking about the student employees and that you're using them to other outside employment. What other sources of funding do you have for student to pay for student employees? There, there really isn't a lot of, so, so to give you a, a sense, um, my department uses the vast majority of the um, tech fee funds, um, the, the 2.5 plus million funds. Um, my appropriation budget is about $70,000 for the other side of the house, which is all of the offices that faculty and staff have. So 
we can dip in a teeny bit, but 70,000 doesn't go very far.